What's up guys? I'm Jake the Lawn Kid. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. Today we've actually got snow on the lawn, as you can see melting away. And it's also pretty cold today. We've got a high of 31. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cold. Today we're going to be talking all about snow on the lawn. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and what you can do to keep yourself in the clear for the rest of the year. The positives to having snow cover on your lawn, and here we're talking about a very light cover, so about two to three inches, is that it'll help insulate the turf. It'll help hold in any heat that has been shined down on the lawn. It'll help hold in that heat and keep the turf warm. And number two, it'll help retain moisture in the lawn and prevent what is called desiccation, which means in a nutshell that if you don't have a snow cover, that cold winter wind that we have right now will literally whip across your lawn and other plants and it'll literally suck the moisture from the leaves. And again, that is what's called desiccation. And you're not really going to be able to tell so much right now, being that it's winter, but then as we progress into early to mid-spring, you'll be able to tell that those areas are going to have a little bit more of a pale look to them compared to the rest of the lawn. And just keep in mind that those are areas that you're going to have to pay more attention to in the spring. Now on to the negatives of snow, and this is like when we're getting massive piles of snow. The first problem that we could see when we have too much snow on the lawn is that we're going to get snow mold. Now snow mold is basically a fungus, it's in your soil year round, and when your lawn is covered by mounds and mounds of snow, that's when it's really going to start to show itself. And in addition to snow mold, when comes a lot of snow, comes a lot of road salt, because you guys know that during the winter when you get a blizzard, you're going to have all these plows and trucks out here cleaning off the roads, and they're definitely going to be throwing a lot of road salt out too to help melt the ice on the road. That's going to end up in our lawn, and as the snow melts, that's going to end up finding itself in the soil, and it's going to throw our pH off, and that's the last thing we want to do. So one thing I recommend you do earlier this year, if possible, is get out there a little bit earlier with your sprinklers and go ahead and give your lawn a thorough rinse down to make Make sure that you wash that road salt through. When it comes to road salt on my lawn or my driveway, I don't really recommend using it at all. I like to try and go as organic as possible with it. There are some years where it gets really bad and I end up having to break tradition. First thing I recommend you do is if you're going to select a road salt, get one that contains magnesium chloride. This is just going to be a little bit less stressful on our grass plant. And in addition to that, another tip I recommend you do is mark off the edges of your lawn. This is going to help you distinguish where you can apply your product and where you shouldn't apply your product. This will just ensure that our application is less harmful and more efficient. Please try to keep foot traffic to a minimum because when you walk on your lawn, you got to remember the ground is frozen. Whenever you walk on frozen ground, what's actually going to happen is you're going to crush the crowns of the grass plant and when you crush the crowns of the grass plant, it's going to die. So keep that in mind. So whatever you do, just try and stay off the lawn, whether that be with you walking on it or your car driving on it. That's going to do it for today, guys. I know it's been a quick one, but I just wanted to let you guys know that we're getting snow now. Make sure you're careful, and you should be just fine all winter. With that, I'm Jake the Lawn Kid. Thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next time.